Hello and welcome to episode 3 of Relegation Regen Rebuild with Palmer. And today we're going to start off the month of October with a game against Carpi and then we face Pescara, Perugia and maybe Venetti. I'm not so sure. We'll have to wait and see how the episode goes. And as always, we've got a kit upgrade to go through. So there is the comment on screen for Kovac. Thank you very much once again, Touring Boss, for putting this customization in. Unfortunately, there are no red Adidas boots. These are the closest to red, so these are the ones I'm going to go with. The Adidas Glitch World Skin 2. It does have the boxing tape, the high socks, the untucked tight t-shirt, and he is the captain because... I didn't have a particular captain in mind, so I'm very happy to oblige. Before we move on to play the games, it is the 1st of October and we did promote some youth players last time out. So here is the squad report, Francesco Esposito overall of 66 gone up by 2, Lucas Gruber overall of 62 gone up by 1, Mario Casson overall of 53 gone up by 1, Andre Maric overall of 50 gone up by 1, Uras Gabric overall of 51 gone up by 1, Radoslav Ivanov overall of 59 gone up by 5, Lucas Dreschler overall of 57 gone up by 1, Tommy Marinovic overall of 56 gone up by 3, Milan Krasanich overall of 54, Anton Kovac overall of 64, Bernard Deisenberger overall of 53, Valerio Mariani overall of 56, gone up by 1, Antonio Ricci overall of 57, Matthias Trevisan overall of 55, gone up by 6, Bernard Jungbauer overall of 52, gone up by 1, Andrea Marino overall of 56, looking alright stats wise, nothing too special but not too shabby. Simone Ricci overall of 53, I think I figured out how to pronounce that last name of Nino's. I think it's Nino Grabasic. 65 overall, 1 star weak foot, 3 star skill moves. I'm not so sure about his future at the club because of that 1 star weak foot but it does mean that he can cut on his right foot. Bernard Anzinger overall of 58 gone up by 1. Had a dreadful episode last time out. Davor Ujevic overall of 56 gone up by 1. That power free kick trait. Stefano Rizzo overall of 53 gone up by 1. Alessio Bruno overall of 56. Francesco Costa overall of 51. Rene Schmidt overall of 49 gone up by 1. Michelle Gallo overall of 58 gone up by 1. So after last episode's bad run of results, I decided to go and dig up a formation that I think would work with this team. And this is what I've got. I've also edited the game plan so you can see that at the top. Here's what I've gone for with the not so dynamic tactics. So for instructions, here's what I've got. Kovac is going to stay back whilst attacking like Marinovic and Mariani will do the inverted runs because he's a midfielder. Then Gallo and Grabasic to get in behind. I've told Grabasic to coincide simply because he's got the one star weak for and I want him to shoot with his right. Gallo to get in behind like Grabasic and Anzinger to a free roam and Rizzo supporting Ujevic up top. He will be our target man. Here is the kit upgrade for Grabasic. Thank you very much to Matteo Fobaldini. Then again, unfortunately I couldn't get any yellow boots. The rest is filled up as normally. But like, there is no yellow boots. The ones that are close to yellow, I took them. Unless you want me to take the default ones. Here are the yellow default boots. Let me know which ones do you prefer and I'll make the change next episode. So first game of this episode, we're going away against our rivals, Carpi. And look at that for kit selection. Palmer is blessed with three amazing kits. Starting lineup on screen, three changes to the side. Marino, Grabasic and Deisenberger get the nod. I decided to drop Anzinger from last episode's performances, especially with the finishing department, so I'm giving Marino the chance to impress. And of course Gallo and Mariani also missing because they are slightly tired. It's a 
game really we don't have to sell for you it's got such a fascinating history you know the interest we could have sold the stadium out what five six times over i reckon because of the history of the rivalry here hopefully it lives up to the billing here we go Serie b action here live from the stadio sandro cabasi and it's a bit of rival Scotty hosting us we have the lowest scoring team in the league yes we haven't been able to find the back of the net, that's been our problem, we need to improve that today. But I'm pretty confident we can do so because I've changed the formation to go out wide. Richie, we have it. We'll play it down the line, here is Ivanov. What a ball inside and that's a goal straight away. Absolute clusterfuck in Carthy's defence. And it's Grubasic who just got the kit upgrade, he's wearing the number 11. Grubasic does well to win the header and the defender does the rest. Kovac, Vito, Marino. Yes, Ujevic back to Marino, he can't turn it in, it's deflected out by the defender who scored the own goal. He's just redeemed himself there. Fantastic block. Come on ref, whistle for half time. Yes, Marinovic with a great challenge there to end the half. It's 1-0 as we head into the dressing rooms. I told you the formation change would work. We had six shots, four on target. Carpi didn't have a single attack. And all of that thanks to that kid in the middle, Marino, who has done his job for the day. He is absolutely spent. We can bring Andinger on to build up his confidence again. So I'm also going to bring on Krizanic and Bruno for the second half. Oh jeez, how is that not a foul? Go on, here is Rito, great ball. Vujovic has to finish this and hits the post. I should have scored that, that was my fault. Still he's battling away for these balls. There we go, here is Anzinger. He still can't finish, neither can Rito. Wow, what a terrible time finishing display there. And that's what I like, you just can't whack it and expect it to go in. I went full FIFA 18 mode there. Right, Kovac can't get the better of him and Krizanic as well at the other post. And it's deflected out for a corner kick. Great block by Marinovic. Great ball over the top, here is Perkusi, whatever the fuck his name is. Oh yes, Carpi has scored the equaliser in the 90th minute. It's their first attack of the game as well. Uh, why can't we pick up a win? And that is full time, 1-1. Carpi didn't deserve anything from this game, but they still managed to come away with a point. Well, I mean, do I even need to say anything about how this match was dominated by us? Man of the match, somehow not Dysonberger with an 8.5, it was Saric with an 8.7 who scored the goal for Carpi. I can't believe we drew this game. We had that in the bag. So I just realised after this game against Carpi that I didn't send the scouts out. Now unfortunately I don't have any suggestions for relegation, regen, rebuild. So please leave them down in the comments section. So what I'm going to do for these scouts is send them to the three countries that have produced the most talent throughout the FIFA game titles. And they have done it consistently. The first one should be no surprise to anyone. We're going to Portugal and we're going for the physically strong player because we need a striker and we need wing backs, especially a right back. The second one, we're going to Sweden with our Croatian scout. And finally, we're going to Mexico for three months as well, looking for a physically strong player. Second game of this episode, and we're facing Pescara at home for the first time this episode. Starting lineup on screen, a couple of changes to the side because the first team was quite tired, especially the forward players and had to do a lot of work against Carpi and still didn't manage to score enough goals for us to win that game. Let's put that behind us. Schmidt and Gavrich start for the first time in their career and I'm putting Marino in the cam spot simply because he was phenomenal against Carpi and I'm looking forward to more of that deliciousness from the number 10 role. What a finish! Lad! Oh! That is a finish my son! 
Oh, crossbar challenge just to finish the drill. Serie B action here live from the Stadio Ennio Tardini. We are hosting Pescara. They're doing quite nicely in the league. Ball out wide. Here is Mancuso. Crosses in and Ivanov hasn't covered the front post. That is on him. It's a great ball out wide to Mancuso, but the centre back at the front post should have had that ball. What a name. Gaetano Monacello scores the first goal of this game. Mariani lays it inside. Great ball to Gallo. He is free here. Still needs his support. Here is Marino. Ball. Great ball. It is Grbasic and it's on his one star left peg. Yes, Gallo in behind. Great ball, Grabasic puts it in front of himself. Here is Grabasic, still it's a good save by Fiorello. And that is half time, it's the last action of the first half. Pescara holding on to that precious 1-0 lead. And by this man, Gaetano Monticello. I didn't even need to check on the stats. Marino, Bruno and Mariani are off for Anzinger, Ricci and Rito. Grubasic moves into the middle and Gallo is pushed out wide for Rito to play in striker. We'll boot it down the line, Gallo, he's just about out of legs. The ball is in, what a miss by Rito. He should have done more there. It was a complete air shot. Corner is in, Grubasic, header in. Oh my word, so close yet so far. Yes, Anzinger lays it back. Gallo has to hold it up. Still someone arriving. Good save again. Fiorillo is having a game of his life. What is this? Good save, Esposito. First one he do today. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. And we don't even get the chance to break there. 1-0 Pescara. They do not deserve this win. I don't know what we have to do to score. I simply don't. Yeah, again, another game where we dominate, not only in possession and shots and attacks, everything. And we simply can't get the win. Somehow, the player that was to blame for the first and only goal of the game, Ivanov, is the man of the match. What is wrong with this game? This patch is broken. I can't wait for the new patch to get downloaded. I decided to record this episode and it's downloading. Hopefully the new patch is better than this. Third game of this episode with the new patch, the 1.02 version. It's against Perugia away. Hopefully we do better than the first two games in this episode and can finally pick up a win. Starting lineup on screen, just two changes to the side. Gruber gets a run in between the sticks. I want to try him out. And Marino is in for Marinovic, who is out on international duty. The rest is the first team. Serie B action here live from the Stadio Renato Curry. We are one of the two teams that still hasn't picked up a win. Three goals scored. We can't seem to find the back of the net in both saves. Especially on this one. I did expect the Serie B to be tougher than League 2 because the ratings are much higher. These guys are 15 to 16. They are down at the bottom with us. Anzinger inside. Here is Ujevic. Still got it. Yes, leave it. Gallo! Can he go in? It does. Get in. 1-0 Palmer and Michelle Gallo makes the most of it and a bit of a deflection there, I don't know, he took the shot cleanly. Oh, he hits the guy on the spuds. Oh, that is a finish shot. Well, this deserves another look in the instant replay. So, Ujevic has gotten the ball here. He managed to lay it off to Rito, but he lets it roll over to Gallo. After Rito rolls the ball over to Gallo, he takes the shot, he hits his marker on the spuds, it goes in between the keeper's legs, and the defender is clueless on the line. What to do? He can't block no more, he's lost his ankle. Yes, Ujevic, good ball. Mariani's gonna take the shot, he hits the post. Mariani, what a ball. Ujevic plays it forward, here is Anzinger, gonna play across to Rito. He's going to come back inside and finish it like the striker he is. Turning out to be a decent forward. Good change of tactic by the manager. Vladislav Ryba 
and everything is working like a charm now. 2-0 up against Perugia just before half time as well. I knew Andy Gerd doesn't have the finishing stats, so I went with Rito, give him a goal, build up his confidence. And there it is, first goal for Stefano Rito. Just in this half, we scored as many goals as we had before this episode started. Isn't that an insane stat? Finally, we were making the CPU pay for giving us chances. Two changes to the side, Antonio Ricci and Krasani Charon for Anzinger and Mariani. Just to fill up that right, si right hand side who is depleted. And Grabasic moves into the centre and Gallo goes over to Grabasic's spot on the left. Oh man, I can't even win the 50-50 battle. What's the point? Good save by Gruber. Final change, Grabasic is off for Schmidt. Hopefully he can bring some firepower. The ball over the top. It's a great ball inside and what a finish. That'll make the final five minutes interesting, but I really wanted a clean sheet. But I'm not mad for conceding that. That is a finish. It connected with that ball perfectly. Melchiori scores for Perugia. Fair play. Looking for a space for the cross. Yes, ball is in. Ujevic wins it, but it's wide. Doesn't matter though, we come out strong in the end. It's a good 2-1 victory here on the road as well. We've been finally able to get the first three points of the season. And the fan favourite is ecstatic as a team and the away fans. And this is probably the game where I'd be like, maybe we didn't deserve it. Stefano Rizzo picked up the man of the match with the goal and the assist. Fantastic performance by him up top. Ujevic was just there to win the headers and help him out. Gallo with a great performance, with a great finish. And Anzinger was much better this time out. I think I'm going to leave the episode here. It's a good send-off. We've gotten the three points we were looking for. Unfortunately, Les and Padova have won their games. We do have the game in hand. We'll play that against Venezia, who are 11th. But that is it for this episode. I hope you have enjoyed it. I'm going to see you all next time. And until then, have a good one, guys. Bye-bye.